the legendary Tarm Markvar, Goblin's Bane, is hosting a tournament for the greatest heroes from generations past and present. Uh, the, co the goal is to slay as many captive goblins as possible before the heroes fall in battle. Will any of these individuals be able to live up to the legend that is Tar Markvar? Find out as our optimized characters go through their tests for our Goblin Week number two. Hello everyone, Dave here again. So this is the first video in our second week of Goblin Tests. Now this is with our optimized builds, and if you didn't see the announcement video, which was actually it was meant to go up the day before, but it uh, uploaded earlier today, uh, the optimized characters were done differently than the original uh, editions character creation methods. So in the first week I did what would be the standard uh, character creation guidelines for all the different editions of Dungeons & Dragons, or at least the numbered editions. So zero edition, I know it technically has a number, uh, although it's, I guess, referred to normally as original d and I didn't do that one, and I don't own the basic rule, so I wasn't able to do that. Uh, so for first, second, third, fourth, and fifth edition Dungeons & Dragons, I'm creating an optimized set of characters now. So where the first one used the generation method one uh, for whatever edition it was, be it uh, 3D6 down the line for first and second edition AD&D, uh, 4D6 dropped the lowest for th third edition and uh, fifth edition, I think it was, and the standard array or an array of ability scores for fourth edition. Uh, with the optimized characters, uh, what I'm going to do is actually, or what I had done, is I created uh, fighters using a set range of ability scores. And what it is, is it's a strength of 18, uh, dexterity of 12, and a constitution of 16 with all the other stats being 8. I'll show the character sheet off here in a moment. Uh, other considerations, when I was working on the original week's uh, set of um, tests and characters, the one thing I wanted to do is try to have things as, as close to each other as possible. So I wanted to have as uh, similar an equipment as possible. So most of them ended up having chain mail and a long sword and shield. Uh, now the only difference with that was I think the third edition character uh, chain mail was a much more expensive suit of armor, so they got scale instead. Uh, but mathematically, scale ended up adjusting uh, just as much as chain did in previous editions. So with the uh, the optimized characters, all that's kind of thrown out the window. So uh, I've got my first edition AD and D character here, and we'll take a look at him right now. Uh, so this is our optimized version of Aeth and Jassan. Uh So as you can see, strength 18, intelligence 8, wisdom 8, dexterity 12, <coughs> constitution 16, and charisma 8. <coughs> Um, so, with this character, as you can see now in the AD&D days, if you had an 18 strength and you were a warrior class, you could roll on the exceptional strength chart. Um, so you roll percentile. Uh, so for these tests, I did actually roll the percentile. I, I could have gone with 18 zero zeros, but I thought that was a little bit too much. So I did roll to see what we got. So the main things to note here is with our 18 uh, slash 80%, uh, our hit adjustment goes from what we had, I think it was zero for uh, the original character. Uh, so he gets plus two to his attacks now and a plus four uh, damage adjustment. Uh, now there's also things like open doors on a one to four and Ben Byers 30%. That's not really all that pertinent. Uh, with 16 constitution, we also get plus three hit points. Uh, now with the hit points also, because this is an optimized build, I'm giving maximum hit points to the AD&D characters since they would normally roll. Uh, the goblins, which would also normally roll hit points, are also going to have a fixed amount. Uh, it's not going to be their max, but it is going to be uh, four hit points for every single goblin. Uh, now with this, I also wanted to get the best equipment possible, so my starting gold was 160. So I was able to afford banded mail instead of chain mail, which reduces my armor class from 4 with the standard build, or with the chain mail armor, down to 3. So my armor class is 1 better than it was before. Uh, my hit points are 13, I think they were 8 before, so I've now got uh, 5 extra hit points. And uh, since the goblins have 4 hit points themselves, uh, pretty much guaranteed to kill uh, the goblins on any hit. 
and the, this version of the fighter hits the goblin's armor class of 6 on a d20 roll of 12 or better. Other than that, the goblins are pretty much the exact same. Uh, so what the goblins have, and I'm just going to move this over onto this side, since I am left-handed and I want to keep track of stuff, it's best to have that there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the character is going to be a lot, this is going to be a lot different, I think. Uh, the first edition AD&D character in the original set of tests was probably the second, uh, well, well, it wasn't probably, it was the second weakest of all, with the fourth edition fighter being uh, the lowest overall total. So I think this one may be quite a bit different, uh, and the reasons for that is, uh, with this character, any hit's going to kill the goblin. Uh, instead of having to roll, I think it was a 14 or greater to hit the goblins with the first character, I can now hit a goblin on a 12 or better, and it's a guaranteed kill because I do a minimum of 5 damage, so... I guess I technically don't even need to roll the uh, the damage dice for the goblins. And unlike the last set of tests, this is actually going to be the first round of combat for each of the editions. Uh, because I'm doing this as just one <coughs> set of battles per day, it's going to make it a lot more manageable. Uh, so... We've got everything set up, uh, so these are our dice. Hopefully they'll show up pretty decently on the camera. I'm going to try to roll them as close to the goblins as possible. You don't really need to see my uh, initiative track or anything like that, so this will be the dice for my uh, fighter. Um, so there were a few things that um, people had mentioned about uh, the AD&D stuff. One of the things people wanted to see was uh, adjustments for weapon type versus armor. And I'm not really going to do that in these just because it's another set of modifiers that I don't really want to keep track of. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, if I do want to run an AD&D game and I don't think I'm going to use that uh, rule in my uh, first edition AD&D game, just to kind of keep things simplified. Uh, another thing that I had considered is when it comes to initiative and weapon speeds. Now, uh, with AD&D, it does say that weapon speed normally doesn't play much of a role. Uh, I think in the only instance that I would even consider it would be if I tied initiative, then uh, you could consider the faster weapon to go first, which will likely be the goblin's uh, short sword. Uh, over the long sword, but I'm just going to do everything simultaneous with that as well. So with all that said and all that done, let the Tar Markvar Invitational begin. So our first hero is going to be our first edition AD&D fighter. I'm using the same miniature as I did from the previous one. Uh, there are going to be some differences with the miniatures that I use, but this will be our first edition AD&D fighter. And, like I said, let the games begin. So, the first thing I'm going to do is roll our initiatives. So, again, goblin dice, uh, fighter dice. With this version, the higher, the higher roll goes first. And uh, our first edition, Ethan Jassan, optimized build, is going to start things off. So, he unsheaths his longsword as the go first goblin steps up to him. And let's loose a mighty swing, which actually misses. Our goblin, in retaliation... Uh, wow, the goblin actually hit. The goblin has to... Oh, no, sorry, the goblin misses. That's the other thing. Uh, because of the new armor, the banded armor, the goblins need to roll a 17 or plus. So, uh, where this fighter had chain before, he's trained, he's gotten stronger, he's kind of beefed up a bit, and he got some new armor. So the short sword just bounces harmlessly off as we go to our second round of combat. And this time the goblin's actually going to get a chance to go again. And got an 8, so that is a miss. Ethan, in response, uh, also misses. So these two are actually battling it out. The goblin's managing to dodge, the fight, uh, the armor's holding true for Ethan. And, whoops, going back to third round of initiative. So the goblin goes on 4. Goblin's going to lead first, and a miss. Ethan, in response, natural one, so he, f there's no fumble rules, but um, he almost trips over himself as the goblin just completely dodges at the last second. Alright, but Ethan, undeterred, will recover, swing back, as he regains his balance, and with that, he will slay his first goblin. Alright, as the goblins move up in line. 
So I guess I should say the rules for this fictional tournament is all these goblins were taken captive from the goblin army that had the gall to try to uh, attack Tar Markvar's army. And uh, the rules are simple. If the, go if the goblin's able to fell a fighter, it earns its freedom. So that's why they fight. Uh, so goblin number two steps up and actually gets to lead things off and will unfortunately miss. Ethan, in response, natural 20. Now again, I don't think they were critical rules either, so I'm just going to roll damage. And that is, uh, well, it's obviously a kill because, again, they're pretty much guaranteed kills. So, we get our goblin body pile set up here. So, Ethan hasn't even been hit once yet. So, now this may be a long battle. Next round, Ethan goes again, misses our goblin, whoops, dice cock. Still misses. So this is going to be, like I said, the first edition ones are going to be pretty epic. Now, this is simultaneous combat, so both characters are going to go at the same time. Meaning I'll roll both d20s at the same time. And the goblin actually lands a blow, but Aethan similarly also strikes. Uh, now, if I were to use speed factors to determine on a tie which of them goes first, uh, which is an idea I'm kind of floating for when I run first edition AD and D. The goblin would still get a stab off because the short sword is going to be a quicker weapon than the long sword, uh, but that's not a huge issue. So, goblin does four damage, reducing Athan from 13 down to nine, and Athan hits. It's guaranteed kill, but why not roll anyway? So that is a total of 11 damage, and that is our third goblin down. Next one steps up. And Ethan just immediately swings at this one, but misses. This goblin uh, just barely misses. Uh, so again, the armor just deflects. So he just uh, the metal bands just catch the short sword blade and prevent it from going into Ethan's supple flesh. Whoops. Uh, the goblin goes again. Misses again. I'm rolling a lot of 16s, which kind of sucks because in the first in the first set that would have those would have actually been hits. Uh, in response, Ethan destroys his fourth goblin. So yeah, I think we're going to see a much different result for our AD and D character here. Uh, next goblin, next combat, simultaneous once again. And nope, those are horrible misses on both sides. Uh, Ethan recovers first. And takes out his, uh, was this, fifth goblin. Obviously inspired by the legendary hero that sits on his throne behind him. Okay, next set, next goblin, simultaneous combat. And, wow, this is going to be pretty brutal, I think. Now, again, this the, may not necessarily be the way that they all go. This is only the first combat. But uh, this is the bodies are already piling up, and Athan's only been hit once. And that'll miss. So the next goblin line misses, but Ethan misses this one as well. Ethan recovers though, gets to go, and kills another goblin. Uh, so even if I were to have rolled the hit points, um, really honestly, I think what I actually might do is a second set where the goblins have max as well just to see what happens. Um, I'll think about that one though, and if I do, it'll be a bonus video. Uh, so another goblin moves up, another set of initiatives. All right. Oh, so that goblin hits Athan once again. So rolling a 19, just slipping it through the bands of his metal armor uh, for five. So that's actually a pretty good hit. So Athan is down to four hit points. He is now in risk of dying from the next attack. In retaliation, he rolls a cheese, natural 20. Uh, so again, uh, I'm just going to say that's going to do max damage because he kills the goblin anyway. So, again, the, the body pile is picking up here. Another set of simultaneous uh, strikes. So, um, now again, with first edition AD&D, &D, and I mentioned this in the first one, but if this is the first uh, of these videos that you're watching, uh, first edition and second edition AD&D, &D, a combat round lasts for one minute. Uh, it's funny because they actually make comments on how they could do uh, shorter rounds, but that would just, you know, it wouldn't feel right, I guess, from their perspective. So even though I'm only getting one attack in a single minute, <coughs> it doesn't mean that 
it takes them a minute to swing their weapon. What it means is that for most of that minute, uh, the goblin and Aethan are uh, parrying each other's blows, or the goblin's dodging out of the way, Aethan's dodging out of the way. Uh, the one attack the round that they get represents uh, the actual opening where they could get a legitimate strike in, so one that's not automatically dodged type of thing or parried. So, so this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, so, anyway, moving on to our simultaneous battle. Uh, both miss. Next round. So, Aethan recovers first and strikes down another goblin. Another one steps up, hoping to earn its freedom. They both go at the same time. And they both miss. Next round, once again. So these two are in sync. Uh, and then Aethan just absolutely obliterates them. Alright, next goblin, next round. Aethan goes again, misses. Our goblin also misses, however. Whoops. Uh, goblin recovers immediately, tries to go for another stab. And nope. And Aethan hits another one. This is... wow. So like I said, when I said things were going to be a little bit different this time around, I meant it. Alright, Goblin goes first. And that is a miss. Aethan in response. Wow, another natural 20. So, uh, that is six points of damage for a four hit point Goblin. Down he goes. Simultaneous battle. And both miss each other. Next round, the goblin gets the first opportunity. And hits. So this goblin actually manages to find a way through the seams of Athan's armor. And hits him for uh, four points exactly. So that brings Athan down to zero. So with that, this goblin earns his freedom. He is pardoned for his crimes immediately runs out and this goblin goes back to the cells for the next day's set of battles. So how did our first edition fighter do? Uh, well he took four hits, uh, well sorry one two, sorry he took three hits before he was downed um, which I think was about on par with the with the other ones but again took a lot more attempts before he was finally hit even for the first time. So the body count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve goblins killed. So twelve goblins on the first round of the first day of this uh, this battle. So <clears throat> again, now is that going to be in? You know, does that indicate how the rest of these battles are going to go? It's hard to say. I mean, the dice rolls were definitely what they were, and that dictates a lot of what's going to happen. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this is quite a difference. I don't even think, uh, with the first set, just a second here, because I have my results back here. So with my first set, um, I only, the most I ever got was actually nine. Uh, it was nine goblins, and that's when I was rolling the hit points uh, randomly. So that first edition with the standard build only averaged to 3.2 goblins killed uh, per battle. So we'll see what happens with these optimized characters. So this, like I said, this was day one. And uh, so far, whoop, if I can get it to focus, Tar Markvar uh, back there, like I said, on his throne. So our hero is taken away and his wounds are healed. He's bandaged up and he's ready to go, go for more of these tests. But in the meantime, uh, Aethan is pleased. He dismisses the rest of the fighters. So our second edition fighter, our third edition fighter, is going to be focusing on a two handed uh, weapon and more of a damage dealer. Uh, I'm going to actually make her a female. And our 4th edition and 5th edition fighters are also here with us. 
They all are dismissed. They go back to their chambers. And Tar Mark Farr, weary from a long day of ruling and governing and witnessing people uh, slaughtering goblins in his name, uh, retreats to his room as well. So that was day one of our Tar Mark Farr Invitational. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, come back tomorrow when we look at our second edition AD&D Fighter. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you then.